Hey guys, Nick here again from Quick Tech, and today we're taking a look at one of the cheapest Chromebooks money can buy, and that is the 11.6 inch Lenovo second generation E100. I picked it up from Micro Center for around $79, and for that cheap price, you actually get some bang for the buck. I've had it for a few months now, so let's talk about it and see if it's something that you might want laying around the house. So as someone entrenched in the Google ecosystem like myself, a Chromebook actually makes a lot of sense. I can catch up on YouTube, reply to comments, manage my channel, send out a few business emails, and do some light browsing without the need to fire up my MacBook Pro or a more powerful machine. Where Chromebooks start to lose me is when they start becoming over beasts with Core i7 models and 16 gigabytes of RAM, gigantic SSDs, and price tags nearing $1,000 or more. I mean, for those price tags, you can get a more feature-rich Windows or even Apple product, which isn't limited by the Chrome OS. And as you'll see in this video, Chrome OS really doesn't need all that much power to operate. Same goes for the majority of apps available on the Google Play Store. So first, the unboxing. Pretty basic stuff, but you will notice right away that this device charges via USB-C, which is incredible at this price range. Taking a look at the laptop itself, it's plastic all around, and the top is a grippy matte finish, which picks up the occasional fingerprint here and there, but is certainly not a fingerprint magnet. The inside body has a brushed steel look, which is unexpected and adds to the user experience. You have an 11.6 anti-glare HD display at 1366 by 768 resolution, and a well-spaced out keyboard with some chrome shortcut buttons built in up top. The screen bends back completely flat, but does not flip around, and this is certainly not touchscreen. As this laptop is geared towards the education space, both the keyboard and mouse pad are spill resistant, and the entire laptop is drop proof up to two and a half feet, around the same height as a standard classroom desk, making it great for kids. It's about an inch thick and 2.7 pounds, about a quarter pound heavier than the Pixelbook. This is definitely not competing with the ultra thin Chromebooks on the market, but at one-tenth of the price, it's not as bulky as you'd imagine. In terms of I.O., on the side you have your USB-C port, a USB 3.0 port, an HDMI port, and a full-size SD card slot reader. On the other side you have a headphone jack and a Kensington lock, because, you know, everyone's going to want to steal this. For specs, this has a quad-core MediaTek 8173C processor running at 2.1 GHz, which is the same processor found in other Chromebooks in the $300 to $500 range. You're also getting 4 gigs of DDR4 RAM, which is enough for multiple Chrome tabs and apps to be running simultaneously on this lightweight OS. Now here's where it gets interesting. This guy is only shipped out with 16 gigabytes of onboard storage, which sounds absurdly small, but remember, most of what you're saving or working on should be on the cloud with this device. Now, personal experience after installing several crucial apps uh, for word processing, photo editing, and even streaming, I'm not even at halfway through the storage. And keep in mind, if onboard storage is a deal breaker for you, you can always keep an SD card or a tiny thumb drive in the USB port at all times. The laptop also has built-in Bluetooth 4.2, so you can connect your favorite pair of headphones or other peripherals. And best of all, this has a 10-hour battery life. And after having it around my house for several months, I've only had to reach for the charger twice. And I'll also note this battery life is the same as the $920 more Google Pixelbook. On the bottom of the unit are two 2-watt two speakers, which, as you'd expect, sound pretty terrible. But are certainly usable in a pinch. The built-in webcam is as you'd expect at 720p, and the microphone is not the greatest. However, for Google Duo, Google's answer to Apple's FaceTime, as well as some Zoom and some Microsoft Teams meetings, it's more than sufficient. The keyboard is alright with decent travel, and each key has a grippy matte texture. This isn't something I'd want to write the next great American novel on. However, emails, web searches, and Google Docs have all been very enjoyable to type on. The mouse pad is a little sticky and makes me crave Windows Precision drivers. However, two-finger scrolling works quite nicely, as does two-finger tap for right-clicking and other common gestures. It also has a mechanical clicking mechanism to let you know it's registered your click. 
Getting set up is easy. Just log in using your Google credentials, and if you don't have an account, you can set one up in seconds. This thing boots up as soon as you open the lid, and in less than 10 seconds, you're ready to pick up where you left off. Now, the viewing angles on this 11.6 inch screen are not the greatest, and possibly the only indication that this is indeed a budget device. That said, it gets bright enough, and as long as you're looking at it straight on, it's fine. All in all, for $79, I feel that this device is a no-brainer. If you're looking to have a cheap device laying around the house to catch up on some emails, do some online shopping, browsing, or even some streaming, this is a great solution. I find myself reaching for the unit more than I thought, and even dock it to a monitor from time to time to do some Google Doc work. Because the screen folds down completely, I often have Spotify running on the Chromebook itself and have whatever I'm working on displayed on the monitor. Sort of the poor man's Asus ZenBook, which has that secondary screen built in on the mouse pad. Despite some online debate, this does have full access to the Google Play Store, and I've even connected to my work PC in Manhattan a few times, running the TeamViewer app, which worked surprisingly well. As Chrome OS becomes more common in the school system, this is a great device if you have kids. And guess what? If it falls higher than three feet and it shatters, you're only out $79. That about does it for me. All in all, I really enjoy the device and I use it more than I thought I would. They also do have a 32 gigabyte model. I'll link this model and that one down below in the description if you want to check it out yourself. If you have any questions about the device or something that I didn't cover, drop me a line down below. I'll hit you back. As always, this has been Nick from Quick Tech. We'll see you in the next one.